Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today we are going to create this neon sign render and I really hope you will enjoy this one and if you do, please don't forget to leave that like and if you're new around here, hit that subscribe. Now let's jump right into empty blender file and first of all, let's just select everything here, press X and delete. We don't need any of these objects and first we'll create a text. So let's press Shift A and let's add a text. Now let's press R, then X and 90 to rotate this 90 degrees. Let's hit enter and let's press one on a numpad for a front view. Now I will go into the text settings and center it out here on the horizontal and vertical axis. Doesn't really matter too much. We won't use this object. Uh, we'll just use it as a template. So let's tap into the edit mode and let's rewrite this to something you want to write. Um, in this case, I will use a neon word and let's now tab out. And if you want to change font, you can do it right here. Um, so just pick whatever font you want. But if you're doing this for the first time, I suggest nothing too complicated. And let's enable X-Ray so we see through. And now we are going to trace this. We won't use this text object uh, itself. We'll create a new one. So let's press Shift A and let's go Mesh and Plane. Tab into the Edit Mode and let's press M and choose Merge at Center. That will ultimately just merge everything into one vertex. And you can move this around, extrude it, whatever. So let's press G and move this vertex right here at the bottom of the N. And now let's press E then Z and just extrude it up. Now E again, let's do the slope and then extrude once again. You don't need to be super precise at this point. Um, we can figure it out a little bit later. And now just select these two vertices and press Shift D then X and just duplicate them right here. And now let's select this one, press E then X and extrude. And here as well like this and now we'll just select these two on top press shift d then z and duplicate this i want these to be disconnected i don't want this to be part of the same mesh as the rest of the e and we can select the letter n press shift d then x and move it right here and now for the o we can insert a new object while in the edit mode so let's press shift a and we'll just insert circle and let's change this to 16, for example. And now press R, then X and 90 degrees. Let's confirm and press S, scale it down and G to move it. And let's fit it right here. Um, if you need more like ellipsoid shape, you can press S, then Z and scale it on Z axis. And basically this is how you can insert new mesh into an existing object. You don't need to tab out and create a new one. You can just insert a new primitive in while you're already in the edit mode. If you feel like this is too fast for you or you don't understand some core concepts, make sure to check out my courses. I carefully designed them to take you from beginner skills through low poly illustration all the way to full character illustration, textured environments and much more. And I build the courses as creative projects, each with its own style. And every time there's a new technique or something needs explaining, we stop for a while and you get an in-depth explanation. But in the end, you still get a full project result. So if you're interested, please check out the link in the description. And now we'll make this a little bit more rounded. So let's select the corners of the E. So I will select this one, hold shift, select the bottom vertex and press Ctrl shift B. That's the vertex bevel and create the bubble like this and increase the number of cuts with the mouse wheel to something like this. Don't go too dense at this point, something like that. And now we can do the same for the N. So let's select these corners, hold shift and select the ones on the other side and press Ctrl shift B to do that here. And make sure you have quite a lot space between the vertices on the corner there. So something like this. And now we can adjust this. So let's select this cluster of vertices, hold shift, select this one, press G then Z and move it up somewhere here. And now let's do the same for the bottom ones like this. And if you want to maintain the slope, you can always just move everything a little bit like this, but I will keep it here. Um, I don't mind a little bit of a change in slope there. So um, let's step out here and now we can select the text object, press X and delete. We don't need that anymore. And now select our new vertices, right click and convert to curve. And now in the curve settings on the right, we can go ahead and in the geometry section, increase the bevel depth here and get something like this. And this is why I 
um, I was cautious on the corners there because if you go too wide, uh, this will start overlapping there. Of course, you can fix this somewhat by going into the edit mode and moving these a little bit lower so it's not so sharp there. And do the same for the bottom ones. Move them around a little bit and get a little bit more space here for extrusion, something like this. But don't go too wild. And now we can kind of work with the position of these so they match the rest of the lettering here, something like this. This is too high probably. Okay, and now let me fill caps here um, so it's not open and we can tab out and press Ctrl-1 to add subdivision surface modifier or Ctrl-2, however you wish. Right click and shade smooth. And if you go to the modifiers panel, you will see the subdivision is added using the Ctrl-1 or Ctrl-2 shortcut here. So now that we have our writing, um, let's press Shift-A and let's add a plane. Now press R, then X and 90 to rotate. And press G, then Y and move it a little bit back like this and just scale it up quite a lot and now we can create the camera angle so let's press shift a let's create the camera like this let's press alt r to reset its rotation press g then y move it back and then r x and 90 to rotate 90 degrees and we can hit zero on an unpad to look through the camera and additionally make it go further so press g then z twice to make it go back a little bit now before we jump into the neon sign material let's import some texture for the wall um, so the neon tubes get to stand out and I think the brick wall is a really great example here I went ahead and found this factory brick on polyhaven.com so you can just go ahead and download that 2k resolution should be just fine and before you hit download um, make sure you expand this and choose displacement here as well for example as a PNG and that should be all we need, so hit download. And when you unzip the folder, this is what you should get. So go to textures and you will see all the maps right here. And now in the blender, let's select the plane and let's create the new material there. And let's call this brick and drag this up right here and switch to shader editor. And now the easiest setup will be to use Node Wrangler add-on so go edit preferences and if you use blender 4.2 or higher um, you will see both these get extensions and add-ons here in add-ons you have already installed add-ons but if you want new ones you need to go through get extensions if you have older versions you can just find the wrangler in the add-on section so just search for wrangler Um, as you can see, I have no results here because I have it already installed here in the add-ons. So after you download it through get extensions, go to add-ons and activate it if necessary. Close the preferences and now new shortcuts will be available to you. So if you select the principal shader right here and press Ctrl, Shift and T, you will get this prompt to import and just choose the folder where you unzip them. Select all of them and click principal texture setup and this will automatically import them as correct maps. So diffuse, roughness and everything, including the displacement right here through the displacement node into the displacement output for the material. And now we can take care of the render preview. So let's go to the render settings here. And right now there's an EV by default. And since Blender 4.2, we have the ray tracing options there. And um, some of the material nodes work in EV, same as the cycles, including the displacement, which wasn't possible before. So we'll use both of those. I will do the final in cycles, um, but I will show you how to do the preview right here. So let's enable ray tracing here and let's hold Z and go to material preview. Right here, you should see the preview of your material, though there is no displacement happening yet. If you look from the side, it's totally flat. And that's because this is not subdivided. So let's tap into the edit mode, right click and choose subdivide. And we can press shift R a few times to subdivide this into smaller polygons. Um, but we don't need to go too dense. We can now tap out and continue using modifiers. So 
let's go to modifiers and let's add subdivision surface modifier and i like to do this because i like to keep uh, the mesh more simple and then if i need more subdivisions i can do that through um, the subdivision surface so let's choose simple and increase the levels in viewport to two i will disable optimal display and you can enable the wireframe overlay right here and see how dense your mesh is so something like four should be okay if you want this more dense go five but be mindful of this when you're using you know weaker cpu or something um this might slow down your scene quite a lot so let me go back here and disable the wireframe overlay and now um the next step we need to do is to go to material settings and in the material settings down here switch bump only to displacement and bump and now if you wait a second you will see the bump take effect but this is too crazy of course so let's scroll in on the displacement node here and let's choose different mid levels so something like 0.7 and scale to something like 1 0.1 as you can see we now have a live displacement on the material happening in the ev viewport so this is amazing and here I can change the level of displacement however I want. So something like this should be okay. And now we can of course change the mapping as well. So the Wrangler created a map node here and we can modify the scale. So we can just click and drag here and then move left and right to make this more dense. So let's for example create something like this. So we have more bricks in place. Okay and the displacement is on. So I really like it. And if you now go to the render settings and disable ray tracing, you will see the difference. You will see the live shadows happening there. So this looks already quite nice uh, without using the cycles. So let's take care of the neon material right now. Let's select the sign. Let's create a new material. Let's call this neon. And I will keep the principal shader, um, but I want to have like a fall off um, I want the middle of the neon to be a little bit more visible um, a little bit stronger and then it falls off towards the edges and we can either use Fresnel or something like that let me press shift a and let's import and let's insert a layer weight node and you have the Fresnel and facing option here so we can click through those and as you can see the Fresnel offers this kind of reflection depending on your camera angle, which already looks great. Um, and if we switch to facing, um, by the way, the shortcut I'm using is Control Shift and click, and that will cycle through these nodes and connect them to the surface output. So if you don't have the node wrangler, you can always just like connect them manually if you want. But the facing node is more present and it gives us uh, more of what we need right here, I think. So let's press Shift A and let's insert the color ramp. And first one will be black and white and it will be for the emission strength and the next one will be for the color. So let's just pick the color for now, something like uh, purple color here and let's press Ctrl C hovering over the color. Let's expand the emission and press Ctrl V here to paste the emission color and let's just plug the strength right here and connect the shader to the surface. So now we have uh, a little bit of an emission here. And if you click the white point here, you can increase the value, but you can see it goes to one. Um, if you want stronger emission, you can just change this right here. So if you want to use 10, you enter value of 10 and now you will see you get the stronger emission. Um, but I want the stronger emission to be in the middle. So I will flip this and leave some of the fall off on the on the size there. Uh, maybe we don't need something like 10, we can go 5. But now we can play with the color as well. So we can press Shift A, add another ramp. And connect the facing right here. Press Ctrl Shift and click the ramp so we see the preview. And we can use like a brighter color in the middle. So something like this, for example. And darker color towards the edges something like this and move it around here just like that maybe even stronger okay and now connect this to the emission color and control shift and click the node 
So now you will see you have this strong white emission in the middle and purple one on the outside. And if you go ahead and enable scene lights and scene world, you will get the real time preview of your neon sign. You can of course make this stronger as well. You can go three for the purple and that will make the emission even stronger. And you can play with the strength of the emission right here. Um, but here I would switch to cycles because there we will get more realistic results. So let's switch this to cycles. I will enable GPU and the noising right here and switch my denoising to GPU. And now I'll hold Z and switch to render it. And now this is much more realistic. We have much more presence from the neon sign and you can see the gradient works nicely and you can do a whole bunch of smaller adjustments. So you can now play with the color gradient there. Um, you can play with the emission light or emission strength fall off here. Um, whatever works for you. So let me look from the camera here or you can introduce new lights. So it's really easy to add new colors here or new tubes. Let me just go into the edit mode by pressing tab, select for example this vertex or control point and press shift D and Z to move this down and then E X to extrude on the X axis and you will see you get this new tube here and if you select both of those and go to material settings, create a new material slot and hit assign, you will see this now is off, it doesn't have any material but we can add the same new material there and duplicate it using this icon right here. And now you can just go ahead and for example, change the color of the light to something, for example, blue and play with the strength as well. And for example, duplicate it and this way create new tubes with new colors and have your neon sign really interesting. And now if we select the camera, we can press Ctrl B to limit the preview only to camera bounds. And let's play with the world settings a little bit, let's make it a little bit brighter, maybe give this a little bit more color. And in the render settings, we can also play with the exposure a little bit, make it brighter. And finally, if you press N on the side panel, go to view options, you can enable camera to view. So now if you rotate your view, you will rotate the camera as well. So you can get some nice angles here. And finally, let's not forget to disable this, press N to hide it. Um, if you want a little bit more punch of the neon sign, you can add some glare and you can do that in compositing. So let me expand this and change the compositor and switch to use nodes. Um, and now in latest versions of Blender, you can do that in viewport. So let's click here and for the compositor, let's enable it as always or through the camera. Um, if you want, you know, uh, for the modeling purposes or when you're just moving around in your viewport, you can have it off. So I will enable it for the camera. And now I'll press shift A here and introduce glare node and just plug it in and you can see it already works here. And but if I move away from the camera, it's turned off, but I can switch it to always. And now I will choose fog low with high quality and a little bit smaller size here, something like six. Something like six will be just fine here. But you can see how the viewport is slowed down by the compositor. So I will switch this to the camera and it's much more performant. And now if I switch to the camera, I have that glare node active. So that's it for the Neon Sign tutorial today. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, and again, if you did, please leave that like. And if you're new around here and you want to learn more, hit that subscribe. Thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day.